Welcome to DEFCON 3. I'm KT McFarland. The United States Air Force is the first line of defense for the United States. Well, joining me now to discuss is Chief of Staff of the Air Force, Mark Welsh. That means he's the senior Air Force officer in your United States military. Thank you for joining us, General. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you about is Nepal. There's a humanitarian crisis. The United States was there first. We are in the thick of it. Tell, walk me through the timeline. You've just gotten the phone call saying there's a crisis halfway around the world. What do you do? Well, the first check is are there forces in Nepal? In fact, there were other U.S. military forces, Army um, a unit that was training in Nepal. There are Marine Corps units that routinely exercise in Nepal and prepared immediately to respond to the crisis with Marine Corps MV-22s. They're there now helping with the rescue. The Air Force uh, Air Mobility Command immediately looked at putting C-17 uh, aircraft on alert to take people like the Fairfax County Urban Rescue Team, the Los Angeles Fire Department Urban Rescue Team, to Nepal to help conduct rescue operations, which they have been doing and have saved lives with. Uh, the entire military apparatus immediately gears up to see how we can help. Everything from space surveillance to see if there are sensors we have that can further uh, amplify information on the damage to actual rescue crews to go in and help people. So how long did it take us to get American forces there? You said some were already on the ground, but... How long did it take the Air Force? To About 48 hours to put someone on the ground. Uh, we had a contingency response group that went in a couple of days after that to actually get the airport up and running to accept international aid airflow. Uh, there, there was a, a there are medical support teams that are there from other countries that we are providing support and uh, and supplies to. So a lot of people working really hard to do the right thing, and this is something the United States military loves to do. All right, that's humanitarian assistance. Obviously, we're doing that pretty well. You're on the Joint Chiefs of Staffs, which means that you give the president advice about the overall state of the United States military. When you look at the 40 years, almost 40 years that you've been in the Air Force, how would you rate the readiness of American forces to go to war if we had to? Well, for the Air Force specifically, the individual and unit readiness to fight a, a full-scale conflict is not where it should be. We've had uh, a little bit of problem with that over the last 15 years as we focused on a, a low-intensity conflict in the Middle East. And the resources we've diverted to do that uh, and, and the current pressures on the budget have kept us from having the readiness levels that we believe we should have. So we're trying to work very closely with our financial partners on the Hill mm -hmm. to keep moving in a direction of recovery of that readiness. You know, uh, we've seen that the, the military missions have gone up in the last several years, even though we're drawing down from two major wars. It looks like the missions that you're going, we're going to have to um, carry out in the future are going to be more reliant on the Navy and the Air Force. In the past decade, it's really been more the Army and the Marines. Are we stretched too thin as you look down the road into the future requirements of the force? Well, if the nation expects to continue to use its military force the way it has in the past, we're stretched pretty thin. You can't get any smaller and still do the things we're currently being asked to do and be ready to do the really difficult things that you could be asked to do in an international crisis. You know, you now have to deal not only with the Air Force in, in, in the air, you have to deal with space, and now you have to deal with cyberspace. Mm -hmm. Which area do you think we need to focus on as we go forward? Well, for us, the focus is on the balance between the three. Mm -hmm. We only have five core missions that we do. They're very simple. It's command and control, it's intelligence collection, it's air superiority and space superiority, it's strike, uh, and it's airlift, global mobility. We do those five things in multiple domains now, not just through the air. We also support them and conduct them through space, and we do it now through cyber. And the balance between those domains, which missions do we do in which ways, kind of by creating a synergy between activity in those three domains, that's the future for us. Yeah, drones. Um, people have said, well, that's the future of the United States Air Force. We don't even need people in planes anymore. We've got drones. Um, what do you say to that Well, I'd as say a pilot? Yeah, not even as a pilot, just as, just as, a, as an airman. Um, the success of our Army Air Corps and then our United States Air Force since we became an independent service is all about people. It's not about technology. We've had great technology, but our people are unbelievable. We have not yet replaced the human brain as a sensor, and we're not going to have that done any time in the very near future. There are places where remotely piloted aircraft are really important additions to combat capability. There are other places where having a human being in the mix, in the conflict, and providing the situational awareness that gives you is still essential. For example, I don't think you're really ready for unmanned aircraft carrying nuclear weapons. I don't think we're really ready for unmanned aircraft to carry your family on vacation either. Mm -hmm. And so there's a, there's a way we have to go on some of these things before we commit wholeheartedly to remotely pilot as the only approach. What's the biggest strategic threat the United States faces? 
Well, uh, let me speak from an Air Force perspective. I, the world is changing. It's changing fast in so many different ways, and, and the pace of that change is accelerating. And I believe our biggest strategic risk is not being able to change ahead of it. Uh, we are bound by process, uh, internal process, internal decision-making styles, internal uh, experience that leads us to believe we can take long periods of time to do things. That's not the world we live in today or the world that we're moving to in the future. We have got to become more strategically agile in everything from education to training to thought to acquisition. That was General Mark Welsh, the senior officer in the United States Air Force and the man who's charged with keeping you safe. That's it for DEFCON 3, KG McFarland. Come to foxnews.com for more about the United States military.